you know if you're a genius? Sure, there are IQ tests or college degrees or Nobel prizes you could attain, but did you know that there's an easier way? Turns out there's actually a couple of easy ways. Today at Bestie, we're going to go through a couple of ways to tell if you're a genius or not. So strap in, smarty pants, because today you find out if you should apply for Harvard or not. But first, before we begin this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more daily tips like this and turn on notifications so you never miss our new videos. All right, potential genius, let's look at that genius potential of yours. So here's the great question that we need to answer on the list. How to tell if you're a genius? First off, when someone is eating their food and they're constantly making a sound while they chew, are you annoyed by it? Does it make you feel disturbed? Do you get the sudden urge to scream out, can you chew quietly? If you do, chances are that other annoying sound along with the sound of chewing may get your blood boiling as well. <laughs> Those who suffer from this condition may be diagnosed with misphonia. According to WebMD, misphonia is when someone gets really annoyed, really disturbed, or has a strong dislike for a certain noise. In other words, Misphonia is known as Selective Sound Sensitivity Syndrome and starts with a trigger, according to WebMD. More often than not, this sound is oral, so it's no surprise that many people get annoyed or disturbed by the sound of people chewing. But this condition may be a blessing in disguise. According to researchers from Northwestern University, those who are hypersensitive to certain sounds tend to be more creative than those who are not. Lead author of the study, Daria Zabalina, explains that the hypersensitivity to certain sounds could lead to increased creativity because the brain is processing more information than the average human does, which in turn widens their scope of attention. In order to support her theory, Zabalina and her colleagues conducted two thinking tests. The first test contained a series of beeps which would register the participant's brain activity. Aside from these findings, there are some past experiences that can add to these findings. If you're not familiar with the famous author Marcel Proust, he was a French novelist and he actually lined his walls with corks so it would block out any sound. According to WebMD, if you're suffering from a mild misphonia, you should feel disturbed, annoyed, disgusted, and have the urge to leave the area. But if your response is more severe, you will experience hatred, rage, anger, fear, and emotional distress. This condition may not sound severe, but it has the ability to put a serious damper on your social life. If you hate the sound of people chewing, you may stay away from restaurants and even avoid eating with your spouse or your family. WebMD adds that this lifelong condition tends to start between the ages of 9 and 13 and is actually more common with girls than boys. Doctors commonly mistake misphonia with bipolar or obsessive compulsive disorder. It's unknown what causes misphonia, but doctors have noticed that there's been a higher occurrence with those who are suffering from bipolar, obsessive compulsive disorder, and anxiety disorder, according to WebMD. There are a few ways that you can cope with misphonia. The first way is tinnitus retraining therapy. Healthline states that tinnitus retraining therapy is when people are taught to better tolerate noises. If you can imagine, this therapy could be grueling because you'll constantly be exposed to the noises that you hate. The second therapy is cognitive behavioral therapy. According to Dr. Marsha Johnson, an audiologist with the Oregon Audiology Clinic, who has studied misphonia for more than 20 years, ear-level devices that stream audio of nature and other sounds have been proven effective with 85% of people experiencing relief of their symptoms. So there you have it. That's one way to tell if you're wicked smart. But are there other methods to determine the age old question? How to tell if you're a genius? Well, there actually are a couple of time tested ways to determine if you're really smart or not. And you're probably not much of a genius if you think we're not going to go over them right now. So once again, strap in and get ready to find out how to tell if you're a genius. Number one, questioning. Are you a naturally curious little kitten? As a child or heck, even into your adulthood, did you constantly drive your parents up the wall with constant questioning? Well, then you just might be a wicked smart genius. Experts say that a genius mind will never stop questioning, constantly trying to find the answers to the universe's most complicated mysteries. Does this sound like you? Are you starting to believe you're a genius? Well, continue on. 
because we're going to show you other signs that might let you know how to tell if you're a genius. Number two, talking to yourself. There's an old saying that goes, it's not crazy to talk to yourself, it's crazy if you respond. However, whoever said that was not a genius because talking to yourself is one of the surefire ways to know that you're actually really smart. Psychologists say that your genius mind makes you talk to yourself to help solve problems. Clearly, because no one else can match your masterful intellect. So don't worry if your kids on your block make fun of you or call you that weird person that talks to themselves because you're a genius and they're not. Number three, reading. Yes, books are for nerds, but remember, most nerds are in fact geniuses. Experts on being a genius have determined that people who would rather spend their weekend with their nose in a book instead of getting drunk are more likely to be on the smart end of the spectrum. So get out of the bar and go to your local library because if you want to be a genius, that's where you'll need to go. Number four, challenge. Quick, look down. Is there a crossword in your lap? A Rubik's cube maybe? Perhaps it's the solved values of the Ramsey numbers, particularly R55. If you find yourself constantly trying to stimulate or test your vast mind, then you might be a genius. The experts at Maxim have shown that a genius is always trying to challenge themselves, always trying to expand their gigantic brain. So if you look down and you saw something smart, instead of Dorito crumbs and an empty Mountain Dew, then you might just be in the league of people known as geniuses. Number five, scatterbrained. Maybe you don't think you're a genius because you have a hard time focusing on one thing. Perhaps school was harder for you because when the teacher wanted you to study your times tables, you wanted to look at the fact of the sum of the square roots of any two sides of an isosceles triangle and equal to the square root of the remaining side. That's all right, because a genius mind is often bogged down with many thoughts at once. The human skull was not usually built to fit the brain of someone with such vast intellect, so it's hard to keep all those thoughts organized in there. Don't worry, a genius like yourself will eventually conjure up a way to get organized. Number six, addiction. Let's look at the geniuses from history. Einstein did drugs. We won't go into detail which drugs, but a quick Google search will tell you it wasn't just caffeine. Sigmund Freud, for those of you who have studied him, then you'll be well aware that he enjoyed to party. Charles Dickens, Howard Hughes, Vincent Van Gogh, Sherlock Holmes, all geniuses and all addicted to drugs. Apparently, there's a pretty big correlation between genius and being an addict, probably because of the burden that comes along with having so much more knowledge than the average person. Not every genius is an addict, and not every addict is a genius, but some geniuses are addicts. So if you have a drug problem, maybe you can chalk it up to your massive cranium. Just a thought. Number seven, worrying. Are you like your poor, doting mother due to the fact that you're worrying constantly? Are you just prepping yourself for the end of the world, even though it's just a regular Tuesday? Well, you might be a genius. The reason geniuses often worry, reports Maxim, is that they're constantly having questions and problems running through their head. Questions about the universe, about space and people around them. Questions about everything. They also have a better understanding of the world, which means a better understanding of everything that could go wrong. So if you find yourself fretting over every little thing, don't worry, that's just your incredible mind working harder than everyone else's. Number eight, left-handed. Sure, you may have a hard time writing next to someone who's right-handed, but who cares? You're a genius. A report done by Maria Konnikova of The New Yorker told the world that the more marked the left-handed preference in a group of males, the better they were at tests of divergent thoughts. Left-handers were more adept, for instance, at combining two common objects in novel ways to form a third. For example, using a pole and a tin can to make a birdhouse. They also excelled at grouping lists of words into as many alternate categories as possible. Finally, something good comes out of being left-handed. And that's it. Did you learn how to tell if you're a genius? And well, are you a genius? If you are, bless us with some knowledge in the comment section below. And when you're on that stage accepting your Nobel Prize for Physics, don't forget to thank your bestie. Enjoyed this video? 
hit the like button and share with your friends. Also, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.